Welcome, beloved, all my beloveds. I am a Starius Miraculi, and it's been a while since I've done a video, maybe a couple of months. Usually I don't go so long, and I've been in a transition. I'm now speaking to you from my new home temple, Ascension Temple, in Atlanta now. So I come to share with you some principles with regards to this year, 2016. The title is Decoding and Milking 2016. To decode it, to demystify it, and to milk it for the amazing blessings that it has to offer. I want to remind you of how powerful you are. How beautiful you are, how capable you are of handling any and everything that comes your way. So numerologically speaking, 2016 is a number nine year. Nine is a very powerful year in that it's the completion of a cycle, it's the ninth year of a cycle that began eight years prior, in this case prior to the beginning of 2016. So the cycle that we're completing is a cycle that actually began in 2008. So you might be able to put some of the, make some of the connections with regards to what that means for you on a personal level. Nine is the most mature number. Therefore, the elder self pushes its way to the surface when we're in the cycle of nine. So you'll find that there will be a tremendous push from within your soul to be as mature as you can possibly be, to walk in as much exaltation as you can, there may be an intolerance of immaturity within yourself or within others. There is this demand that is emanating from the central core of being that says the elder self is that which must prevail through our expression. You know, nine is, is much like, um, when we're in a nine year, it's much like being... Mm, in the year of graduation, you know, where we're getting ready to graduate, but it's the year in which we earn the actual graduation. In this particular case, graduation day would actually be the very beginning of 2017. And so in the year 2016, we're moving towards earning the fruitfulness that's going to dawn in the year 2017 when we come into a number one year. So graduation day is the 1st of January 2017. Meanwhile, we're in this cycle of the unfolding of the elder, the cycle of ascension in fact, because nine also represents the frequency of ascension. All numbers are combinations of one through nine. And nine is the elder. And so the elder self is the prevailing force within us. Nine also represents the, the three primary qualities of Godhood, being omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. You know, omnipotence, all-powerfulness, omniscience, all-knowingness, and omnipresence, you know, that which is evenly present everywhere. So when the cycles are about to change, as it is in this case, the veils between the dimensions become thin because we're getting ready to jump from one cycle into a completely new cycle, much like when one, for example, lays the body down and goes into spirit, leaving the physical dimension and moving into the dimension of spirit. 
So it's a very powerful time. The more time you spend in communion with the interdimensional forces, communion with angels, communion with ascended masters, communion with God, God is absolute, you know, the, the easier it is to access that particular connection and be in the resonance of that particular communion. So the nine frequency is a very, very powerful year for the acceleration of spiritual growth. There's also a tremendous amount of endings that happen within a nine year. We're going to find ourselves letting go of a lot of things. You know, things that don't really serve the highest integrity of your being. These things must fall away. So don't fight to hold on to that which has outlived its usefulness. Because there will be a tremendous process of letting go. You know, the nine cycle is also like the cycle of the sacred exhalation of release, where we're letting go, you know, of things. You know, whereas when we come into the number one year in the beginning of 2017, we'll be in the cycle of the sacred inhalation of increase. Also, not to worry if you feel like you're not getting all of the fruits of your labor in the nine year, because quite often those fruits will come in the following year being the one. This is not to say that you can't advance and expand, you know, in your abundance in the nine you can. It's just that a greater measure of expansion and abundance will definitely come about in the one year in 2017. But it's all connected. You know, there is, you know, this amazing process of completion. So meditate on what is it that you are meant to let go of. You know, as we have begun this year, the planet Saturn in Sagittarius was in a few de degrees of, of uh, making a trine to Uranus. And basically, that is taking responsibility, uh, taking responsibility for that which will facilitate freedom. Uranus is always about freedom, and Saturn is about responsibility. And when there's a trine, there's a harmonious interplay between these planets, and so there's a... Uh, a sinking up of responsibility and freedom as well as individuality because uh, Uranus has so much to do with the individuality. I'm going to be me, the whole me, and nothing but me in spite of what's expected of me. We also had a new moon uh, on the, uh, the 9th of January and the new moon also represents new beginnings. It was the first new moon of this, uh, of this new year. And one of the things that was very significant about this uh, new moon is, you know, uh, that it was very closely conjunct the planet Pluto. You know, whenever the moon is new, that means the sun and the moon are merged together. It's like they become as one. They melt into each other. You know, they're at the same degree, and they are operating, you know, in tandem with each other. Okay, and so in the mix was also Pluto. So this is the death of unhealthy things, you know, like new beginnings that will facilitate the ascension frequency because Pluto in its higher resonance is connected with the ascension. You know, it's also connected with the underworld. It's connected with looking at the shadows of life. But sometimes it's through looking at the shadows, you know, and that particular contrast become, that becomes the catalyst for us rising into something much more powerful, much more exalted. So it is a process of letting go. We stepped into this year, you know, with the energy saying, what is it? within us that is needing to die away, what is needing to complete itself, which also ties in to the frequency of the nine. The planet Pluto is also an emphasis of the veils becoming thin so we can gain a greater access to the inner dimensional realms. It's a really, really powerful thing. And, and then just looking at it from what my intuitive being has to say about all of this is that this is an amazing time to realize your godhood, to realize your goddesshood, you know, to recognize the absoluteness of who you are, the absoluteness of who we are, 
that we are so much more than the exclusiveness of our individual soul and body expression. You know, we are that, but we are also the all-inclusiveness, you know, of the universe, each of us being our own version of the whole universe. So we're having this opportunity in this cycle where things are so exalted to really take a very, very close look, you know, at what is the reality of my selfhood as I express me as my own version of the universe? What is your reality of selfhood as you express you as your own version of the universe. The veils are very thin. You can see much more easily and much more effortlessly into these realities if that is where you're setting your intention. Of course, you got to set your intention because where you are, where you're going to arrive is where you're looking and intention is a focalization of where we're placing our vision. So the multidimensionality of selfhood is something that is available. We'll have a full moon in uh, Leo coming up um, in, um, is it 23rd or 24th, one or the other. I, I don't want to go look at the reference uh, for that right now, but it's right in, right in, that, uh, in that time frame. And when the moon is full in Leo, the sun then is in Aquarius. So again, we're looking at uh, the expression of our individuality, you know, the right to be who you are. You know, this is an, import an important time for you to be in alignment with uh, when it is appropriate to say the sacred no, you know, uh, because that is in alignment with your integrity. You know, if the sacred no is that which is going to enable you to be in the highest expression of who and what you really are, then the sacred no is what you want to say rather than the unsacred yes. So we're in a cycle where there's a tremendous motivation to move beyond giving our power away. It's a time to own who we are, on your soul, on your love, on your peace, on your bliss, on your magnificence, on the sacred all that is, which you are. I'm going to offer some frequency of the didgeridoo. Uh, for a moment, and I have a couple other things to say, but offering some didgeridoo to offer some frequency of healing and balance. I'm going to transmit this frequency of the didgeridoo to your heart chakra to create a greater opening of that reality of your being. So receive this frequency in a good way. Receive it, you know, as uh, an expression of the highest resonance of your own being as the divine within you. Oh, my God. 
thanks and praise for the didgeridoo and thanks to the tribal aborigines of Australia as the tribal vessel through which the didgeridoo has come to our world. So that frequency was sent into your heart chakra. I'm going to also offer uh, a little more energy through the vocal harmonics because it's time to open the frequency of the heart. The intention that I am holding as I share this frequency with you is the intention to bring about the harmonic convergence of all of the love that is, was, or ever will be into your own heart. So that no matter what the experiences are uh, as you go through this resonance of 2016, that your heart will be open big and wide, you know, in, in a great spirit of love, that you're going to love the difficulty free, you're going to love the challenges free, you're going to cause everything to be servant unto you. So this transmission is being sent into your heart chakra. When you feel the resonance of this energy, because you will feel it, I want you to say the word out loud, resonating, and smile a big bright smile and take a big breath in and breathe into it. So here comes this frequency into the heart. <sighs> Blessed be the sacredness of your divine being. Blessed be the remembering in your heart, the divinity of your soul. Blessed be the reality of you coming home to yourself. When I do these vocal harmonics, they are carrier waves of consciousness that trigger the acceleration of the ascension current and calls you home to the absoluteness of your true selfhood. Life is so beautiful. The didgeridoo, when I play that, I'm playing with circular breathing. That's why you don't hear gaps in the sound. 
even when I take an inhalation, there's still a stream of air being blown out, and the uninterrupted sound is a reflection of the endless nature of eternity. So it's waking up that eternal connection, and once again calling you home to your absoluteness. So please remember how beautiful you are, how masterful you are, regardless of what the appearances may be. There is something at the central core of your being that is untouched by any negativity or any darkness. I am Astarius Miraculi. I love you so much. And I would love to have the opportunity to work with you at a deeper level. I do offer some private sessions, you know, in person, if you happen to be in the Atlanta area, uh, by phone, by Skype, wherever you might be in the world. And in my sessions, what I do is, one, I do psychic astrology readings, you know, and I you know, really outline the resonance of, of your life, like looking at you know, who you are at the core of your being, you know, looking at the way in which the God self expresses through you, which we discover through the sun and its placements in your chart. Uh, we find uh, insight into the emotionality of your being through the moon, you know, and how you're wired with regards to your whole family dynamics through the moon. Mercury tells us about the, how you use your mind. Venus, you know, the experiences with regards to relationships. Mars, your pattern of desires and, and also something about your sexuality. You know, Jupiter, you know, about the philosophical tendencies of your being. Saturn, you know, what, you know, your sacred labor and your sense of duty and responsibility and work, you know, career, all of that kind of thing. So it's a very deep, you know, decisive, you know, uh, rendering of information with regards to your being, all which gets recorded as well. It's a live session, but it gets recorded so you can go back over it as many times as you might like. It's really, really extremely, extremely powerful. And then the other thing that I do is the, uh, the chakra alignment transmissions you know, where I use the frequency of sound, the frequency of the didgeridoo, as well as just projection of frequency through breath, you know, in order to open up and balance each one of your chakras, chakras being the, the energy centers within your being, you know, when we want to create a, a greater alignment with regards to the frequency of love, you know, we're working with the heart chakra, uh, we, we want to bring you into an alignment with walking your talk, speaking your truth, being in your power, being in your emotional honesty. We work with your throat chakra. When we want to balance what's going on at the emotional body level, we work with the solar plexus. You know, uh, when we want to open up the inner vision, we work with the first eye. People say third eye, but the deeper name is first eye. It's first before the two rather than third after the two. But that's the one we work with to open the inner vision. You know, the, uh, the second chakra just below the navel, we work with that one, you know, in order to bring you into harmonious alignment with sexuality and with your power to express as a creator. You know, and then the crown chakra uh, aligning you, you know, with that God connection, you know, uh, and, you know, that place, you know, where God, Goddess Hood exists within that exalted place of your being and, and gives birth to that higher consciousness, you know, within you. And then the root chakra we work with to lift you up beyond the idea of surviving into the realm of thriving. So I would love to have the opportunity to work with you on an individual level. I know a lot of you partake of my videos, you know, I'll you know, very, very soon be a million views here on YouTube. And I'm really grateful for all of the connections that are being made, you know, and the upliftment of spirits that are happening through all of this. And I'd love for you to allow me to serve and empower you at an even deeper level. So please consider the possibility of having an individual session with me. My website, as you can see on the link, is astarius.com, A-S-T-A-R-I-U-S dot com. And also, uh, I'm going to give you a direct line to reach me if you, 
you know, want to uh, to reach out and go ahead and make yourself an appointment, it's 928-254-9535, and that's in the U.S. I love you so much. Up at the top, there's room for all. It's just the bottom that's crowded, y'all. Aho, ashe, amen, namaste, hotep, in la kesh, alakin, shalom, satnam, harion.